Welcome back. We're at Quarry Lake here. This is M Dog, and we're gonna dig in a little bit to trolling at Quarry. First, let me say a couple things about when I suggest trolling at Quarry. There's two scenarios. One, if you're trying to level up your spin fishing. So if you first got into Quarry and you want to level up spin fishing so that um, you can start unlocking some more of the advanced techniques. Because of the uh, having two rods or even three rods in the water while you troll, trolling can be a good option to do that. The other reason why I might troll at Quarry is if I'm just not on a good spot for fishing otherwise. So the reverse of that would be if I do know of a good spot to anchor up the boat or even cast from the shore, and catch consistently good fish, then normally I would choose to do that over trolling. But those spots change, they fade, there's times that they're just not as good. And in those cases, trolling for me is a great opportunity to get into different spots of the, of the lake that I don't normally fish in and catch fish that I might not normally have access to. So those are the two scenarios. Now some people troll all the time, they just really enjoy it. Uh, that's not me in most cases, but um, there are people that will do it uh, as sort of their main go-to go-to move. The next thing I want to talk real quickly about is if you are f just leveling up to quarry and haven't already been doing a lot of spin fishing, what is the minimum gear or the recommended gear that I would say you want to start trolling with? Well, for me, when I first got here, uh, I trolled with two rods, a heavy, express fishing heavy, and a Siberia linear. You can see they're both going to be somewhere between 15 and 20 kilos according to which one you have in terms of load capacity. They're both good starter rods for trolling. Now, in terms of reels, I really do recommend at least one of your reels be something to the equivalent of a saber, so close to that 10 kilogram mark. Uh, for your second reel, initially you might be able to get away with having something a little lighter, maybe even a 7.5 reel, but it is going to be difficult with some of the larger fish species in quarry to consistently get those in. Now one thing you have going for you is you're going to be in a boat so you may be able to chase them a little bit, tire them out, use your uh, net and get them in the boat. Lots of people have trolled this lake successfully with 7.5 reels. It can be an uncomfortable experience. I do recommend you at least have one reel that is equal to or greater than a Sabre, Sabre 60 preferably. Okay, so another basic part of trolling is I need to get moving as it's we're gonna lose daylight here, but um, you want to assign the two rods you're gonna be trolling with to your one and two slot. So that means holding down U and dragging whatever rod it is into the spot you want. So I've got mine set up already. Now I did mention that some people use three rods while trolling. I have tried this. If the bites are slow, it might be something you wanna try. If the bites are happening pretty quickly, I think having a third rod actually just gets in the way. I will show you how to do the three rod setup, um, but that's not gonna be what we're primarily doing. Now, one thing that I learned that has been very helpful for me with trolling is this idea. Instead of throwing, so normally when you first start trolling, a lot of people, including me, would throw about 50% behind them Instead of doing that, cast in front of you. Cast into a hole that you're gonna be driving over. Still 50, 60%. Always make sure you lock it so that you don't get spooled. I like to have my friction break around 20 or so. And then you put it in the holder by whatever hotkey you have. For me, that's still zero. Pick up your other one. Again, same thing. Throw it towards a hole you're going to be going after. Lock it. 
make sure your friction brake's okay. Not too high, but not too low either. Put it down. And then, as long as your motor's running, you hit J and you start trolling. Now the reason why we do that, we throw the lures ahead of us into holes because those hunter lures that we're using are so good that they will often catch fish on their way down. This one already has a fish on it and we haven't even caught up to it yet. Now when you're catching a fish, if it's small, don't stop the, don't stop the engine. You just want to keep moving. Pull that fish in, caught a lake trout, throw it again. The efficiency here is you've got that line, that lure in the water for as much time as possible. This one does not have anything. Now, let's talk about lures here. On this setup, we're using the Hunter 1002. It's overcast today. The Hunter 1002 is just one of the best, most consistent lures, especially in the evening and when it's overcast. So I'm almost always gonna have that lure on um, in, in those conditions. Now, if it was real hot, middle of the day, the Hunter o o the 1002 might not be the best option. The other one we're using is the Hunter 10, 10 the 110. Typically, it's also a good lure in Cory. Now, that's two Hunter spoons we have on. Let me show you another option here. Any of the Hunter spoons are worth trying. Sometimes you just have to figure out what's the color of the day going to be. And once you figure that out, you might be good for the rest of the day. But let's do something other than a hunter spoon. Now there's plenty of other spoons you can use. The Hypnotics are really good. Sometimes the uh, Satori's are good. Xander 2 is good. The Vico's I like a lot. Um, so a lot of good things. Some of the Handmaids are good. But you also can do Wobblers. So let's try a Funky Minnow. The blue ones in particular tend to be good cast it as far as you want because they don't go very far anyway. So let's see if we can get anything on the wobbler as well. Alright, this is I think still small enough that... So the, the point with gauging the fish, if it's a larger fish that you're going to be fighting for a while, it's worth stopping the engine and standing up. Because you just get a better angle on controlling the fish, of bringing the fish in and uh, less chance of, of it popping off on you. If it's a really big fish and you feel like you're gonna have to chase it, of course at that point you need to keep trolling and start taking control of the boat to go after that, after that fish. All right, so now we're using a wobbler. The wobbler is going to uh, consistently be sinking down as you're pulling it. The act of pulling against the lure makes it sink down. And uh, hopefully we'll catch something. We are getting close to the end of the day here. So real quickly while we're doing this, let's talk about where to troll at Cory. Basically everywhere, staying away from the sides. The reason why we stay away from the sides, uh, well, particularly the sides that have lots of weeds and brush and all that, because we're trying to avoid pike. The lines that we are um, trolling with, I just accidentally stopped the boat. The lines we're trolling with have fluorocarbon leader. So a big pike is potentially going to, um, to bite right through that. So you're most likely to get pike in the shallow areas of the lake. So I still, I still do recommend you go over to the western side of the lake, um, but I would stay away from the real shallow areas if possible, unless you have stronger leaders or just want to take a chance with the pike. Now, a lot of people do uh, just troll around the island. In fact, I was talking to someone recently who was doing really well, and they had this kind of pattern, and they would come to about where we are now, and then they would turn around and just repeat it. Then they would turn around up here and come back. Other people will just full circle the island. I typically will full circle the island and then head out to this side. This 12 meter hole over here, you catch a good fish over here. And just kind of, so you still circle this side, but you try to stay in more of the deep areas and then come back to the hole and then just kind of, and, and really there's no, don't lock yourself into a certain route. You'll catch fish in surprising areas when you're trolling. And that's part of the point of trolling, right? Is to try to get some of the spots that you don't normally, that you don't normally see. So at this point, I would, um, 
I would definitely change things up. I was just out here fishing myself because we're not getting very many bites. It could be that Corey is just a little slow right now. What would be something else good to put on in the evening? Let's try a hypnotic. Uh, let's try the orange one just to see what happens here. Again, we're going to throw it in front of us and block it up. Yeah, we're not getting very many bites, but this is what you want to do. So we have a, while well, we have a, a second here, let me show you what it looks like to troll with three rods. So let's say trolling has been pretty slow. You're not getting many bites. You actually, so the, the trick is going to be with your third rod, you're going to have to hold it. So you want to throw it out there and turn your retrieval speed all the way up. Um, and you're just going to be holding the third rod. Now, what this means, and why I said before, if you have lots of bites, it's not as efficient, is you have no rod holder. In the current game, with the way boats work, you can't set this rod down. So if you catch a fish on one of your other rods, then you're gonna have to actually reel this one in, put it away, and then grasp your other fish. So that's why I suggest, for the most part, just fishing with two. Uh, unless again it's slow like this sometimes I'll have a couple of spoons out and then on the third one I'll put a wobble or something to go down more consistently go down deeper the other thing I would say if you're not getting bites um, speed up slow down start and stop those hunter spoons especially will drop to the bottom as you uh, slow as you stop and so get a little speed, see if a fish that you know likes a little faster retrieval will, uh, will come after it. And then um, go ahead and stop completely. Let it sink a little bit. And then go again. I think that's a good way to go. I just saw there's going to be a competition tonight at Quarry, so it might be, um, might be a good thing that we're here. We might just stay and do that comp after this video. So now it's getting late. What most of us do, and this is just sort of a strategy about trolling, if you are, because um, a lot of the bites you'll get trolling will be in the morning, and then during the day off and on. I feel like at night it's usually okay until about midnight or 1 a.m. But at this point, with Corey being this slow, what, what I would typically do now is reel in the rods, because again, we don't want to get into the shallow water with these. Reel them in and actually put them away. And then go fish for burbot overnight. Trolling is pretty slow once you get past 1 a.m. And so if you have the ability to do feeder fishing, then fishing for burbot overnight is in most cases gonna be much more efficient than um, continuing to troll through the through the midnight overnight hours. I think on average, when I've trolled through the night, even if it's been a pretty decent day trolling, I may only get one or two fish uh, that evening or overnight hours. And burbot can be so good sometimes that it's usually worth. So you know you kind of just need to have that in mind if you're going to be doing that. Have some feeders ready, already set up with fish pieces, so you can quickly transition. Um, to fishing for burbot. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful. This is like the very basics, the starter guide. Um, you didn't get to catch a lot of fish out there trolling, but hopefully you at least got a sense of how we go about doing it. Um, just remember, if you're not getting bites, try lots of different lures. Uh, you know, I always tell people, go look at the record, see what's going on weekly wise. Um, look at the char, Hunter 2, Hunter 1002. Look at the quarry char. There's the, the funky minnow. That's actually the S11. So you might try the little bigger one. Um, here's the Satori Wrangler. Call, really nice quarry off the Satori. Uh, look at the lake trout. A variety of hunters as well as a, a minnow here. 17S triple or 006. The hunter 12 is often a good one. So just kind of look around. This is for all regions. You might check your local region and see if any of that is different. Um, don't forget to check things like the Savan Trout and the Arctic Char. Both are very valuable fish here. Um, 
Wow, someone caught a really large savant off Mayfly. That is fascinating. Uh, let's see. Let's look at the look at the Arctic char real quick. I like seeing something like this. One of the Vicos in the top five. So the Hunter 3, always a great hunter to use. But the thing that I would say is when you see these lures, you're going to see the Hunter 2 show up all the time. It's because A, it's a good lure. It's also because we all know it's a good lure. So we all spend a lot of time hunting, uh, fishing with it. So the Hunter 2 is like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, a lot of the biggest fish are caught off Hunter 2s, but that's because Hunter 2s spend way more time in the water than other lures. That doesn't mean that some of these other hunters and other types of lures like hypnotics and other things, uh, wobblers and other things aren't gonna catch you lots of really nice fish. So anyway, I hope that this has been helpful. A couple people had asked, suggested we talk about trolling at Cory. Maybe this will get you started. Let me know if you have questions or comments and uh, I'll try to get another video together maybe starting at the beginning of the day and we can take it a little more slowly and really rotate through some different lures and some different paths across the lake to see how things go. But uh, as always, thanks for watching.